like I said, this is our last night, amen, on the unified church. And amen, the last time we talked about Jesus' prayer before he was crucified. We talked about the power of being one. Amen. And Jesus said, Lord, make, th make them one. He prayed and said, Lord, make them one, even as me and you. And he, he prayed for the disciples. And then he went further and began to pray for you and I. He, he prayed for the ones that would believe. From the gospel that was preached from the disciples. Amen. He prayed for you and I. Amen. So that we can become one. Amen. It's very important that we be one. Amen. When you be one. Amen. A unified force. The devil can't pull you apart. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to we're going to go back into unity. This time we're going to go into the Old Testament. We're going to be coming from Psalms, very familiar scripture. Amen. Psalms 133. And we're just going to get this these few verses verse 1 to verse 3. Amen. Psalms 133, verse 1. Amen. I tell you, this, this has been a great Bible study session. Amen. On the unified church. We covered so much in this segment that we understand that not only God wants us to be unified, but he also speaking to the whole body of Christ. Amen. When we say the body of Christ, we're talking about believers all over the world. We need to be unified. Amen. We need to understand that you got brothers and sisters all over this world. Amen. And when you come in contact with a believer, amen, there should be unity. If you believe in the same God, same Lord, same faith, there should be unity. Amen. And so it's time for the body of Christ all over not to be in competition, not to be social distancing in the faith. We need to support and back one another. Amen. This is the will of the Father. This is the will of Jesus. We found out last week he prayed this. He prayed this before he was crucified. So you know Jesus want us to be in unity. Amen. Amen. But tonight we're going to go into Psalms 133, verse 1. And this is our brother David, a man that wrote this psalm. A man. We know that David was a prophet, priest, and king. A man. And David was a great lyricist. Amen. He he wrote from his heart, but he wrote through the spirit of God. Amen. Uh, many of his his uh, psalms, not only they were songs, but they were prayers. Amen. David wrote it down. And let's go into this particular psalm. And let's break down these lyrics. Amen. 
so that we can get a deeper understanding. Amen. This is David. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in what? Unity. Now verse 2. I just want to let you see that here now he's going to get lyrical. He's about to compare something. He's going to use a, a metaphor describing the statement what he just made. The first statement he made was behold, meaning look how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Pause, because here come a metaphor. Here comes something to describe how good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together. Here it is. It is like comparing. You see that, right? It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments. I want to stop right there because this right here is the meat. This metaphor here, this is so deep that David compared it to an event that happened and he wasn't even born yet. Are y'all following me? David was not around when Aaron, the brother of Moses, the first high priest of Israel, David was not there. But he wrote it as if he was there. Because he wrote it in the spirit. And he had a revelation of what unity is. And I'm going to tell you what it is. Maybe you never heard it like this before. He compared it to an anointing and an installment of Aaron. And he compared it to the installment of a high priest. In other words, David is simply telling you that unity is an anointing. Unity is an anointing. Aaron was anointed and chosen and called. And then he was in high priest. It wasn't no little, like little Debbie. The high priest. Hallelujah. It is like the precious ointment. And the, the ointment that is used in those times. Because the, 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 the ointment represents the anointing. But the, the, the ointment was a sweet smelling ointment. It was a sweet smelling ointment aroma that they used to anoint the high priest. Oh, hallelujah. 
So it was so so in other words, the the unity, amen, is an anointing that's taking place, and it's a sweet odor. It's, 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 it it smells good. It's pleasant. Oh, y'all follow me. Amen. He compared unity between the brethren, the church, the people of God as a precious ointment that anointed the head of Aaron. So, we know how the anointing flows. It flows from the head. Amen. In other words, from the head, the head must first have a spirit of love for the people. Amen. Love for the people. It starts from the head. This, 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 this movement starts from the head. It flows. Amen. You can't have unity without love. Amen. You cannot have unity without love. Now, it flowed from the head, but it didn't stop there. So when it flows from the head, it ran down. It ran down. So when it ran down, that means then from the head, then it goes to the next level. Then it flows to the next level. It don't just stop. This anointing, this anointing don't just stop at the head. So that's why we got to change our mentality when it comes down to the unity. We cannot just focus that it starts with the leader and it ends with the leader. Stop it. It don't go like that because you're stopping the flow of God. What the leader is putting out must continue to you and to others. It must be contagious. Whatever God give him, amen, it don't stop with him. You must get it and regurgitate it and pass it on. Even when it relates to just the word of God. When God give him the word, it is not just for him. He must give it to his people. But this is talking. This is talking about what? Brethren dwelling together in what? So unity starts from the head and it flows down to the tail. Unified church. Love. Amen. Love. The head receives the love. He gives it to you and you let it flow. Amen. Because it talks about that it ran down upon the head that ran down, down from the head to his beard. From the head, then it went to his beard. Amen. All on his face, it, 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 went, it went down. But it didn't stop there. It didn't stop just on the face. Amen. It went down to the skirts. Now, first of all, I wish I had a diagram, but I want to let you know that the high priest had on a lot of clothes. He had on a lot of clothes, a lot of garments. So I want you to picture in your mind this man with a lot of clothes and garments being anointed. And the anointing flowed from his head down to his face, down to his skirts of his garments. So that all flowed on his clothing. 
on his clothing, even down to the skirts, it didn't stop. It didn't stop. Everybody receives what God is pouring out. In this love, in this, in this unity, when we are unified and we are, we are dwelling together in the spirit of love, the blessings and the anointing and the ointment and the smell, all of those ingredients, you're going to get it too. It flows. It flows. It didn't just stop at the head part of the church. Do y'all understand that? That unity just don't stop with the head part of the church. It flows to every department. And I'm going to show you something too. Like I said, it don't just stop in ELVM. It flows to every part of the body. Amen. We need to do some more connecting. Now, I understand. I'm going to say this here, and I'm not ashamed to say it. If you say you're a believer, and, and, and you got other believers, and you don't want to, to fellowship and love, something wrong with you. Something wrong with you. Now, I understand that there are some people you can't fellowship. What's well, something wrong with that? Because if somewhere, somebody don't have the right love. Oh, y'all don't want to go with me. Amen. Amen. We supposed to be the body. Like I told y'all the other week, your body, your body itself do not have competition against the other body parts. Because if it did, you would be messed up. Your heart and your brain work together. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And so now, this anointing, this flowing, the way it's moving, it's moving down. And it, and it don't discriminate. It ain't, it ain't resting. It ain't stop. It, it just keep flowing. It keep flowing. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. The skirts, it ran down. His beard, then it went down to his skirts of his garment. Went out all down his clothes. It flowed all the way down. Do y'all see how God want the movement of unity to be portrayed? Amen. We must come together. Amen. In the spirit of love. And David, David, he wasn't there, but he, he, he wrote it by being taught about how it was back then. And he compared it because he experienced love from the brethren. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. De David, David had some good people that he had some awesome people that worked with him. Let's thank God for our first lady. Amen. He experienced Unity from his comrades. David. Ah. Uh, our brother David had many different accounts where he could testify and show you how it was so awesome to work with a group of people that didn't fight against him, that fought for him. We know that David also was a great warrior. So I'm going to give you an account, the reason why he would write something like this. There was one account where David, amen, he, he was outside of the walls of 
Jerusalem. He was outside the city. And at the time, the Philistines was encamped around the city. And he was about to faint. He desired a glass of water on the inside of the city. He just desired a glass of water. He was just talking, man, I wish I could get a glass of water from that well. The brothers that was with him heard his desire. They loved David so much that they took his thought, his desire, and made a reality. David didn't have to say, hey, go do this, go do that. They just heard him say, I wish I could get some water from the well. Now, let me, let, let, let me go show you, though, the love that they had for him. They had to go through the enemy camp. They had to fight. So they went in fighting. So these guys had to be some ninjas, man. I'm talking about these guys was, were really, 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 really could get down. Amen. We're coming from Psalms 133 and verse 1. So these guys went in, fought their way into the city got the glass of water and fought their way back out the city and brought it to David. This is why David wrote this because he experienced unity. Now let me show you something. Now keep in mind, David was about to faint and he desired, he desired some water. When they brought it to David, and David knew what they did to get it, David said, you did this for me? I didn't, I didn't tell you to do it. I was just talking. I was just talking what I wished, and you made it a reality. To the point he said, I can't even drink it. He said, this here is just too sacred. He pulled it out as an offering. And check this out now. He was about to faint. But you want to know what made him strong? The unity of the brothers. They must say, man, I, you know what? Come on, let's go fight. Let's do it. Let's do it. He got strength from knowing he had people that had his back. Oh, how good and pleasant. The brothers that dwell together in unity. Another key point. I already told you that unity, as you see, is an anointing. But you want to know what else it is? It's sacred. Unity is sacred. Unity is a spiritual thing. It moves God. It moves God. We already ran over it. That you saw when Nimrod got the people together in unity, even though it was for an evil purpose, but because it was a spiritual law and a spiritual force, it made God come down. God came down from the throne. So unity is an anointing and it is sacred. Unity is sacred. Hallelujah. And it flowed 
He described it as an anointing. He described it as an anointing of that, that, that high priest that flowed from Aaron, flowed on the top of his head, down to his beard, to his garments. And he went further. He began to even to, to compare it as the dew of Harmon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion which is a holy place. Zion, a holy hill in Jerusalem, in Israel, a holy place. He compared it. Amen. How to do covered. Covered the holy hill of Zion. Unity, people, covers. We dwell together in unity. The mindset is, if you look bad, I look bad. The mindset is, none is well until all is well. We cover. We cover when we are in unity. Love covers a multitude of fault. In other words, you can't see no frailty because of love. I may have some deficiency. I may have some frailties, but because I got a covering, you won't identify it. You won't see it, and you won't know it. Unity. Ain't nobody got to be knowing, knowing what's wrong. <laughs> because love. I'm not going to talk about what's wrong. Even if it is something wrong. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to spread it. Why? Because I love you. And you love me. Love cover. Amen. He compared it. He compared it as, as oh my God, how to do in the morning, how it covered her. You couldn't even, you can't even see it. Ain't that amazing? Do you understand that a mountain is something that's big and that everybody could see it? But you will not see it if it's due covering it. I know what I'm talking about now. I mean, Lord, we 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 understand what happened to Kobe Bryant. We don't. I don't uh, make a mockery off of his death. But the reason why he died is because the man that flew the helicopter he couldn't see that hill. Am I right or wrong? And what was covering it? Do. Something that's so big that could stand out, you won't be able to see it because love covered it. That's what David is talking about. David understand that. He understood that he had people that loved him so that they covered him. I'm going to give you another account of David. And you can go and read scriptures. The Bible shows us David had went into battle. And it shows us that he was fighting Goliath brothers. You know, Goliath had brothers. Yeah, Goliath had uh, I believe four more brothers, and they was giants as well. Amen. I'm going to help you tonight. You know, these brothers didn't like that, that 
they killed their champion. Uh, David killed him, so they sought for revenge. You, you know, uh, you hear a lot of people say he had five smooth stones, but one of them killed one of them brothers, but he had four more left. So he had four more brothers. And so this is the time David had got older and he was king. David was a man's man. He, that's all he knew was war. But you know, sometimes, you know, I think about us, uh, even when we get older, you know, you think you still got it. I, uh, I think about the time when I tried to get out there and play basketball. And, boy, I was going. I was going. I played. And next thing you know, them knees start tightening up. Ankles start tightening up. And I got to come out the game. Can't finish because I done got older. But, see, David was known to be a giant killer. He had a reputation. He had a reputation. He was a great warrior. I mean, I mean, uh, there was a time even when Saul, Saul uh, had a group of men that went out, amen, and killed. But then David and his group of men went out and killed uh, 10,000 to the point that the women began to sing about it. Now, there's one thing about it. If you want to make a man mad, let the women start talking about another man. That's what happened. That's what happened. Saul got haterated in him because he, the women start singing. Saul killed, killed 1,000. David killed, he killed 10,000. David! And Saul got to be, he got to be, he like, hey, 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 hey. So he got jealous. So, so David's reputation, oh my God, he had a reputation. But in this particular battle, the Bible shows us that David went out and he began to fight. And he, oh, this time he was in trouble. Let me show you something. There's going to come a time, even when you are knowing it, you're going to need somebody. Oh, y'all don't want to go with me. Even when you anoint it, you're going to need somebody. But I want to show you the love of the people. Notice now, each time I'm talking, even though David is the writer, I want to show put your attention on the people who surrounded David. We don't, you, don't, you don't hear about them. David got in trouble. He went to fight this particular giant. And when he went to him, the Bible shows us that this giant was about to slew David. I don't know how, what happened. I don't know if David tripped and fell or something. But David was in trouble. The Bible said the giant was about to kill David. Watch this. The Bible says that the men that was with David saw that David was in trouble. I want to put a pin in it right here, though, because you got people with the wrong mindset. You got some people that wouldn't have reacted. You got some people would have said, that's the giant killer. He ain't got no business on the ground. That's the giant killer. He ain't got no business being about to lose. Oh, hallelujah. David was about to be killed. He was about to be killed. The giant killer was going to be killed by a giant. But the Bible said that there was a man that saw that David was in trouble. 
and he ran. He ran so fast that he got in the way, pushed David out the way, and he killed the giant. Then the other men that saw him kill the giant, the Bible said, one of the men took a javelin and threw it so hard that it went right through another giant. What I'm showing you that the men that was with David took care of business. Killed all them giants. But watch this. After they killed the giant, they didn't ridicule David. You got some people, yeah, you failed, see. <laughs> if you, and then if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> you wouldn't even be here. I mean, because, uh, well, it's like you losing it. You know, I know you used to be the man, but truth of the matter is, you losing it, man. You losing your power, man. <laughs> Boy, you wait till we get back to Israel. Wait till we wait, 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 wait till we get back to Israel. Look, we gonna tell them what happened today. They didn't do that. The men came together, and they said, "David, you too valuable to us." Say, you the light of Israel. Say, from now on out, you ain't got to come out here and fight. We got your back. We need you to be our king. We need you to handle the kingly affairs. You ain't got to prove yourself no more. You, don't, you ain't got nothing to prove. We got your back. We going to take the anointing that you had. And we're going to kill the giants. You ain't got to do this no more. They didn't really kill him. They didn't belittle him. They loved him. They said, you too valuable. In other words, when he was about to die, it moved them. They understood the value of David. We're about to lose our leader. We're about to lose the one we love. We about to lose him. So from now on out, I know we covered you this time, but we're going to cover you for sure. You ain't got to face this demon no more. We got it. This is why David would write something like this. Because he understood what love what really was. What it really was. And when you check the history, when you check the history of David getting love, it was not from his immediate family. He did not experience true love from his immediate family. It was people he never knew. Why? His own daddy. His own daddy didn't choose him. Put him out there with the sheep. And when, and when uh, Samuel came, he brought the best out. David was the worst, according to him. His own daddy. When his brothers was out, with the rest of the chickens, scared of Goliath, he sent David to give them food. Take this sight lunch to your brothers. They got to fight, and you just go and give them this food, and that's it. Didn't even understand he was sending the hero to take care of the job. He couldn't even see the hero. He giving him a sight lunch to take to his brothers, and his brothers was chicken too. They all hiding behind a mound. David didn't get no love from his brothers. You saw it when he came and brought his brothers. His brothers began to rebuke him. Why you came out here? You just want to see something. He didn't get no love from his immediate family. He got it from Jonathan. And Jonathan's dad hated him, but then he got it from Jonathan. He got it from other men that he accompanied himself with 
and he experienced what real love is all about. Amen. It ain't about who you know. It's who you with. Right, that's a quote. That's a, that's, a, that's a bad quote. Don't steal it. Uh, it's recorded. It's recorded right now. So if anybody try to take it, you get it from me. I'm going to get you. It ain't about <laughs> who you know. It's who you with. Amen. David grew up with his brothers. But he experienced true love from the brethren that was with him. So that's why when he wrote this song, this, this, he was a lyricist. He wrote it from his heart. He wrote down experiences. So when he wrote that down, it was a passion. Amen. Amen. Most lyricists, amen, when they write, it's coming from their heart. You know, uh, they, you hear the songs, you can hear a song of pain. You can hear a song of joy. But in this, we hear the song of unity from brothers that's willing to give their life for each other. Amen. Amen. When you sow good seed, you reap good seed. Amen. And David was there for Saul. Now David needed help, and he had help. Amen. And, and the way that David did it, he did it in a in, in a right spirit. He Saul tried to give him his weapon. He said, "I can't use it. I, I can't. I can't do it. I'm not. I didn't. I can't do it because I haven't proved myself." Amen. Amen. And and David and David covered Saul even when Saul tried to kill him. David didn't do no evil. So that's why God aligned him, put good people. He put good people around him. Amen. And for us to be a unified church, the church got to be good people. Amen. We have to have a heart, a heart of love. Amen. I truly enjoyed uh, this segment, the unified church. And this is the mindset we must have. Amen. Spirit of love. One towards another. One towards another. And, 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 and in these times, in these times, we need more love. We need more unity in these times. The world is shaken up. Amen. It's, you're living in a world of uncertainty. Don't know what's going to happen. But then again, we the people of God. It's time for us to rise. Amen. And we got to rise in love. People need to understand that this is the house where love is Lord. Amen. Amen. This, this church has the antidote. Amen. We have the antidote. And when you have something that can help people, and change their state for better, it's like you got to tell it. You have to share it. You see the need. Amen. You understand people need to be here. Amen. Amen. You, 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 it, it will help you to be an effective witness when you have that conviction on the inside of you. Amen. So let us Practice that. Let us begin to love one another to it's contagious. So when you go, when you go witnessing, you're not just witnessing as a false witness. You're witnessing with the experience of knowing where you receive Christ. Good God Almighty. They can receive Christ. Where you receive healing, they can receive healing. Where you've been delivered, 
they can be delivered. You would come with that conviction because you experienced it. That's why David was able to write with a conviction because he experienced it. Experience bring hope. That's what the Bible say. Amen. When you experience something, you got something to say. Amen. Oh, you need to come to LVM. Why? Man, shoot. Just like I told y'all, I gave y'all my witness. When I told you how, how this church allowed me to bloom into the man of God that I am. When they sent me cross seas. I experienced that. But it was because of what? This church. Amen. Can't nobody tell me about my own church. And so when I defend it, I'm defending it. Amen. Because I am the church. Amen. I'm not going to let you, amen, try to paint an ugly picture of me. Notice what I said. I didn't say of EFM. I said, I'm not going to let you paint an ugly picture of me. When I look in the mirror, I think I look good. So, 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 so now, you ain't going to tell me I'm ugly. And I ain't going to believe it either. And that's how I feel about this church. This church is me. It's me. It's me. This is me. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's the conviction. Amen. That you need to have. Don't walk around with your head down. Amen. You hold your head up. Amen. The reason why I'm teaching tonight is because of what I learned right here. Amen. What you getting is ELVM. Amen. Hallelujah. I represent ELVM. I am ELVM. If you enjoying this Bible study, you enjoying ELVM. You enjoying the teachings. You enjoying the substance that have been pulled out for many years. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, we're going to get prayer. Amen. The Spirit of God is already here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Oh, God, you sanctify us by your word, Lord. Your word is truth. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for sanctifying us, Lord, by your word, Lord. Father God, we ask that you take any and everything that's not right and pleasing. In your sight, Lord, we ask that you forgive us and clean us, Lord. Wash us, Lord, in your blood, Lord. Purify us, Lord. Purify our minds and our hearts, Lord God. Oh, Lord, make us right. Make us ready, Lord. Make us vessels, Lord, ready to be used by you, Lord God. Stir up, Lord God, the gifts that's on the inside of, one, of all of us, Lord. Use us, Lord. Lead us and guide us by your spirit in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in us right now. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our minds and in our hearts. Touch those, Lord, that are watching this broadcast, Lord. Touch them right now, Lord. Save and sanctify the lost, Lord. Heal and set free and deliver, Lord God. You see what the people need, Lord. And Father God, you touch them right now. In the name of Jesus. Where that person that ready to give up, Lord. 
We thank you, Lord, for giving them hope in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you for doing it right now. We thank you for saving souls right now. We thank you for adding right now to this ministry, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we thank you for the love, the love, Lord, that shall be in the body of Christ, where we will see each other as brothers and sisters, honoring the same Father in the name of Jesus. We come against the spirit of division. We come against the spirit of strife. We come against the spirit of discord. And we thank you for a unified church. We thank you for a unified body in this city, in this state, in this area, Lord. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Everybody say amen. Say amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us for Bible study. If you have any questions or comments about the lesson, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at efvm4460 at gmail.com. Send us a DM or post your question in the comments section below. We look forward to hearing from you. Greetings, everybody. My name is Pastor A, and I pastor at Christ Delivers Temple, Columbus, Georgia. We are here at part of Evangelical Faith Vision Ministries. We are so excited about what God is doing in this ministry. We want to challenge you to sow because this place is fertile ground. We know that God has given a seed to you, and you want to plant it in this ground. You want to be a part of what God is doing here. God has given us manifold testimonies of miracles, signs, and wonders, and you want want to be a part of it. We want to challenge you to name your seed, claim what God is doing. I speak in declaring the decree that God is getting ready to give a supernatural increase just because of your seed. So we want you to click the link at the bottom. There's a link down there. Givelify. Give on Givelify. You can give on PayPal. You can send us an old-fashioned check. But whatever it is, we want you to be a part of this. Get in on this soil. The time is now. Don't wait. We declare in the creed that we'll never be broke another day in our life because we got a seed in our hand. We talk to our money at Evangelical Faith Vision Ministry. We say, seed, go, grow, and return. Seed, go, grow, and return. Seed, go, grow, get the overflow, and bring it on back. You need to be a part of it. So, 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 so. God bless.